All right, so here's another video on another positive word question, and this is from October, November 2018, paper two, variant one. Okay, so this is a very interesting question, by the way. So it says here, the diagram shows part of a number grid. Okay, a vertical rectangle is enclosing three numbers as shown can be placed anywhere on the grid, okay? The grid is continued downwards, all right? If n represents the number in the top of the rectangle, complete the rectangle with the expression in terms of n for the other two numbers. Now, this question seems like it's a difficult question, but in all honesty, it's not. Once you kind of study and examine the grid thoroughly, you will understand what exactly you're supposed to do. So basically, now you can pick any three numbers vertically from this grid, okay? and you can generalize them. So that means, here's how this works. Okay, let me let me show you guys what I mean. So if you have the first term, which is one, let's say, the next term is six, which means it's five greater than one. And the next term is 11, which is also five greater than six. Okay, now let's see if this is just a coincidence or is this something that's happening everywhere on the grid. So I'm gonna pick these three numbers, okay? Not just the one that are shaded, but let's just pick these three numbers. So eight to 13, I can go by simply adding five and then 13 to 18, I can simply add five. So that means vertically, if you're moving from one number to another, all you're basically doing is you're adding five to the previous term. So if, if you wanna generalize this and suppose that the first term turns out to be n, what exactly is it that you need to do in order to get to the term that's directly below it? You simply need to add n plus five, that's it. I mean, you simply need to add five to n. And then for the next term, well, you're gonna do n plus five plus n, which is basically, sorry, plus five, sorry, n plus five plus five. So I'll just do it over here which is going to be n plus 10, and I'll erase n plus five here. So hopefully that makes sense, and it's just a one mark question, so pretty simple. Okay, now, again, Umer, sorry, Umer, not Umer. Umer multiplies the top number in the rectangle by the bottom number, okay, so here's what he's doing. He's taking the top number, and he's multiplying it uh, by the bottom number, okay. He then squares the middle number in the rectangle. He finds the difference between two, these two results, Using your answers to part A, show that this difference is always 25. Okay, now let's let's not for a while use these answers in the grid, okay? Uh, in this rectangle that we have just found in terms of N. Let's go back to the grid with actual numbers and see if, if this really makes sense or not. So basically what Umar is doing is that he's multiplying these two numbers, okay? Six times 16, which is basically equal to 16 times six is 96, okay? And then he's squaring the middle number. So that means the square of 11 is gonna be 121. I can do that without a calculator. And then what he's doing is, he's subtracting the two numbers. So that means what he's doing is basically 121 minus 96, which is equal to 25, okay? But see, this this time we did it with actual numbers, okay? But what we do is, what we're supposed to do here is, we're supposed to show that this is always equal to 25. And for that, we'll have to use their terms in terms of n. Okay, so we can do that now. So multiplying the two numbers, the top and the bottom numbers, n and n plus 10 gives us n squared plus 10n, okay? Squaring the middle number, which is n plus five, the whole thing square, will give us n squared plus 10n plus 25, the identity. Now let's find out the difference and see if the answer is indeed equal to 25 or not. So n squared plus 10n plus 25 minus n squared plus 10n. And do not forget to put a bracket because you're subtracting the entire expression. So what this becomes is that you can probably see where this is going. Sorry, n squared plus 10n. So you have n squared plus 10n plus 25 minus n squared minus 10n. And what happens next is that n squared and n squared gets canceled out plus 10n and minus 10n gets canceled out and you're left with 25, and hence, you've shown exactly what you were supposed to. Okay, now let's do part C. Part C says, Lena places a number, uh, sorry, places a rectangle on the grid. She adds the three numbers in her rectangle. The sum of the three numbers is 174. So now that you have all the three numbers in terms of n, and what are they exactly? n, n plus 10, sorry, n, n plus five, and n plus 10, my bad. Okay, now what Lena is doing is basically she's summing up these three numbers and the sum of her numbers is basically 174. So if I sum them up, I get 3n plus 15, all right? n plus n plus n is 3n, five plus 10 is 15, and this is equal to 174. Oops, sorry, 174, not five. So 3n is equals to, with this I can find out the value of n very conveniently. 
So 174 minus 15 is basically 159. Now let's work out the value of n by simply dividing our result by 3. Now n is equal to 53, but again, do not get carried away. See that the question is asking the largest number. It's written the word largest in bold letters. That means you've got to pay close attention to it. So the largest of the three we know is not going to be n. It's not going to be n plus 5. It is in fact going to be n plus 10. So what's n plus 10? That means we're simply going to replace 53, n with 53. So 53 plus 10 is equal to 63. So there you go. This was a three, two, one, uh, six mark question. And by the looks of it, it seemed kind of difficult, but then if you really get to the bottom of it, if you really, you know, get to the very depth of it, then it becomes easier. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.